So before we jump into the kind of hands-on demo, I thought I'd pause here and see if you had some other questions. It sounds like this is not an easy tool to learn. I would say that it is an easy tool to learn for putting online lectures up. It all depends on your entry point, right? How so, do you compare with like other online lecture type tools? It all depends on what your entry point is. Yeah. So um, if you say to yourself, I'm going to use Captivate to record my desktop and put that in my course. You come in, there's a screen that when you open up Captivate, it says, what do you want to do? And it's like software demonstration or screen recording. You click on it, it takes you to the recorder, you start recording your screen, and you have your audio there and you record it, right? And then you're done, and you have your audio recording, and then you hit publish, right? Or there's another screen that says, do you want to bring your PowerPoint in? And so if you've already created a PowerPoint presentation and recorded audio into that PowerPoint presentation, it'll import it into Captivate, and then you can publish it and bring it into your learning management system. Or you start from scratch with a, you know, interactive tree scenario thing. That's more complicated, but that's more complicated in all tools, whether it's CSCR or Captivate or Articulate Storyline or whatever. So it all depends on what your entry point is to the tool and what you want to do with it. We could all probably use Photoshop to maybe, you know, select something, but can all of us use Photoshop to um, move a tree or blur out, um, you know, pimples or something like that? Probably not. So it all depends on, like, what you're coming in to do and your slice and where you go with it. So because it's a big, complicated tool and lets you do all kinds of things, some things are easy, some things are hard. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't... Rather, I was, I was going to start with kind of doing a step-by-step, -step, all right, why don't we all do X, pause, and move on. To try to answer John's question, I'm going to just go through like a five or ten minute, I'm going to just load in a PowerPoint file, record some audio to it, publish it, and upload it to an LMS without pausing for you to kind of follow along, just to show you kind of how long it takes somebody. I, I want to say, I provide support on this tool. I do not consider myself a Captivate Ninja. I'm a Captivate user, I know the basics. If you ask me something really complex and detailed, I'd have to say, I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. I will look up the information on it and get back to you. So I just want to show you kind of what it looks like for kind of somebody who's used the tool for a few years, but not extensively. I do not teach online, I'm not a, a faculty member here at UW-Madison. So does that sound okay to you? To just kind of show you a short demo and then we'll do the hands-on stuff in a minute? Okay. So I'm going to go, I close Captivate, just to show you what it would look like opening. And what it's doing here is it's saying, hey, I need some extra rights in order to do screen capture. And we say, sure, I'll allow you to do that. We're not actually going to, I'm not going to do screen capture. So here, this is what Josh was referring to. I get an option. I could say I want a blank project, but I actually know that I want to work from PowerPoint. I'm going to say, I'm not going to create this from the ground up in Captivate. I'm going to import some PowerPoint slides. So I'm going to say, create. And it's saying, all right, Dan, where's your PowerPoint files? It's kind of prompting me down here. So of course, now I have to find where I put my PowerPoint. I have a question. Yes. If, if, if you have a lecture you learned, Um, the uh -huh. advantage is, so if it's going to be consumed on multiple devices, Captivate will give you that screen resize thing. Um, other than that... But if you do, what you do now, bring, bring it in your PowerPoint? Actually, this doesn't do the screen resize, does it? This is not a responsive project. So, I, there's... We're talking about two different things. Yeah, it yeah. will scale it, but it won't dynamically. Do you remember how in Josh's project, it would, things were actually moving around. I don't, it wasn't just scaling. It was actually moving things around based on the size of the screen. Yeah. That's responsive design, and you have to design from the ground up in Captivate to do that. To get that. No, it scales it. 
Yeah, but then what ends up happening is if you designed your PowerPoint to be consumed on a screen and your text is a certain size and they're trying to consume it on a little mobile screen, they wouldn't be able to see the text. I can show you what a responsive project looks like inside of Captivate as well. For now, I'm going to just go with the PowerPoint example because I think it's a common use case. I teach, I've got my PowerPoint slides, I want a, an easy way to put some of this material online. Um, I'm not going to go through all the detailed settings here, but just say that you can set some, vari some various things here. I'm going to go ahead and just tell it to import. So it's working. Question while it's doing this. Sure. PowerPoint itself has a terrible time switching between squarish and whitish yeah. formats. Well, this is it useful for just that step, like import and re-export for the different sides? It doesn't really do much with the PowerPoint when it brings it in. It just makes it into an image in the background. Okay. So this process it's doing here, it's basically doing what I call like a screen scrape of the slides and it's just making an image of them. There's some interactivity I think that gets retained, but not a lot. So you have to make sure that your slides are perfectly ready to go because you can't change them once they're in here. I don't know, you can change them once they're in here. You can't, can but you change but the images on them? Yeah, you can change everything on them oh. if you want to. He was talking about like, if you've ever done this before where you go in and your PowerPoint is like, you know, an SD resolution where it's square and you want to make it widescreen, if you do that, all your stuff is like scattered all over the place. Okay. All the faces are, you know. Yep, and everything gets stretched because it doesn't, PowerPoint itself, like Microsoft PowerPoint, doesn't do well with that whole I'm resizing my slide thing. This won't help with that. <laughs> I know what you mean because I have some old presentations that I did in more of a square and I wanted it to be uh, you know, 16 by 9 or widescreen because that's what a lot of projectors are now. But no, it, yeah. All Sorry. Right. So <laughs> I've imported my PowerPoint and I'm now ready to record my audio. I'm obviously not going to record real audio because I want to go quickly for, with this, but I'm going to press record. I love and it. Hit preview once for me just so you can see the slide. The preview checkbox. Thank you. I like using that because then I know what slide I'm on. <laughs> Save and file. Sorry, I broke it for you, didn't I? Uh, my machine just needs to be replaced. Oh, okay. So, all right. So if I want to, I can calibrate. And this is actually one of our tips that you do actually go through the audio calibration because if your audio is really is too loud or it's too soft, it's going to be more difficult for your students to hear or understand what you're saying. So getting a clear, uh, well-recorded piece of audio is important. Um, I'll go ahead doing, and you suggest doing that each like by session or just well you know if, if, if you changed anything in between yeah like I've got a new microphone or I'm in a different room or um, on a different computer so hello my name is Dan we're going through the auto calibration da, 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 da. all right so now it's gonna it's gonna give me a little countdown. Hi, my name is Dan Lavalley, and welcome to this example presentation. It's cool, you know, so as he's recording, it gave him the levels there in the center. He had some visual cue that he's recording, and now he has a waveform that shows him. It's recorded too quiet, actually. Yeah. You didn't get up into the yellow at all. Calibrate input. And then. Hi, right, let's try this again. Yep, it's definitely too quiet. See how it's not getting into the yellow, or input level okay. Uh, testing one, two, three, that's too much. Testing one, two, three, still too much. It was at like point one before. Yeah. Testing, testing one, two, three, that looks good. All right. The reason we said that looked good because it wasn't going into the right constantly, it was staying in yellow. Well, I did that on purpose, because now this lets me show you the edit function for the audio. Oh, well, of course. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I click on the edit tab, and what I can do is it's just like a word processor. I can click and drag to select pieces of the audio. Oh, that's right. So Captivate has this weird thing where it won't let me cut the entire audio out. So I'm going to go 
to the end here, and I'll start recording again. It gives me the timer. Hi, my name is Dan, and here is a much go. better quality so recording. Before you was only like right there. So now see how we see this waveform? That's what you want to see. And it would be too recorded too loud if you saw it's called clipping. Basically, you get these flat top. Instead of having these nice waveforms, it would go up, and then there'd be this straight piece to the waveform. So now if I play this, actually you're not going to hear it because I have headphones on. Let's try this. Oh, there we go. Hi, my name is Dan, and here is much better quality recorded audio. So, it, also, I just, if you could hover over this yellow one right here. That is insert silence. So that's how you quickly go into a side and insert silence if you want to. Like if you say something like, and now you're going to look at this slide and contemplate the visual representation of la da da you know? And then you just wanted to put in a little silence there. So I just realized I'm taking longer to do this than I said I would. So I'm gonna quickly say save. It's gonna prompt me to say, hey, your audio is 6.8 seconds. Do you want the slide to be 6.8 seconds? And I, of course, say yes, close. And then record audio just for one more slide. Hello and welcome to slide two. This is more information about UW Madison, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yay! Save. Yes. Close. Do me a favor. Wants to just click on timeline so you can see the. So that's how long the slide is on the screen. That's how long his audio is. And let's just pretend that I've recorded audio on every slide. I've gone through every one. I've recorded my perfect audio. I've delivered an amazing lecture. I am now ready to publish. So by default, most people are going to want to do, well, I should, just kidding. <laughs> um, I would generally recommend the HTML5, because that's what lets you create clickable interactive material. But like we've been kind of mentioning, you can publish a video. If really all you need is an online lecture where you don't need the students interacting, a video will probably suffice. In this case, I want to show you the HTML5. Swift is Flash content. Do not click this button. Um, Get rid of that button. Yeah. I always select uh, scalable HTML content and click, uh, oh, I also want to click zip files. And I'm going to put these on the desktop. For now, do you have to zip it if you're going to play it right away? Or? Well, I want to actually upload it to Canvas. Oh, ooh, he's going to uh, do the full thing. Okay. So I say publish. I'm going to click close. That's all right. You're good to go. And now, if I look on my desktop, there's my files. Yeah. Now I'm going to go into Canvas. Well, I, I'm yeah. going to just go to Canvas just to give you a preview of the future or the possible future. The intended future? Yeah. Good. Um, so here I go to files. And I'm going to create a new directory or a new folder. Go into there. I'm going to say upload. I'm going to go to the desktop. Grab the zip file. Canvas gives it up, us a warning saying, hey, this is a zip file. What do you want me to do with this? I say, well, I want you to expand it. It is one. No, no, it's not one gig by how big is your file? Um, not that large. Four megs. Here's where my fact that I, the fact that I don't have much patience. Here we go. Ah, there we go. So it was unzipping it. So now if I go back into my course and I scroll down to my Captivate section, I'll add a new There we go. So basically I'm saying, hey, I want to add a new file to Captivate. Here's where, let's see, I need to captivate tests, right? Wow. 
Yeah, this I you have a few things in there. Yes. All right, I should have cleaned up my course before I did that. All right. Does it captivate example? Hi, my name is Dan, and here is much better quality recorded audio. Hello, and welcome to slide two. This is more information about UW Madison, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> so, you can see how this would work for an entire lecture. The students would just kind of click to kind of advance, um, which is the default behavior, but as we've kind of talked about, you can change just about the way that Canvas does anything. We hop back one more second to Captivate and show one more thing. I swear I'll be done showing things in Captivate. I just want you to show how you can edit the slide once it's been brought into, you just what, right click and you go edit PowerPoint. Edit with Microsoft PowerPoint, edit slide. And then, in, I don't know, yeah, get rid of the text or something. Yeah, 1948. <laughs> And then just hit save way up, way up top, save Captivate. There you go. That's how you edit the slide once it's inserted into Captivate. Okay, so once this gets done, I will close it and we can start the hands-on stuff. It is done. Unless you have other questions. I mean, I, I'm happy to answer your questions. Have hands on, then we can have smarter questions. Based on experience. All right. So, first thing to do is. I do have one question. Okay. What's the difference between a software demo and a video demo? Uh, they're on the startup screen. For uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, I think one keeps all the mouse cursor and click noises and stuff inside of it, and the other one it just records your screen. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it also creates some text prompts yeah. occasionally. Like if you, if stuff has like helper text on it and you hover over it, I think the helper text gets pulled in to captivate. Mm -hmm. so. All right, so go ahead and launch Captivate on your laptop. I hate this right here. Oh, yeah, go ahead and yeah. Let's play. It doesn't work on my It's not work. Oh, access to it. Oh. oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's your old call. No. Uh, I don't know. Is the flash drive in the room? Yep. Do you have it there? Got it. Right here. There's a cool site called alternative2.net. Mm -hmm. You can go and type it in any software program, and it'll find. 10 examples, or how many examples there are okay. of similar okay. programs that are in the freeware. Some are like one thing only instead of copy yeah. they just do screen capture. Yeah. This should look them up. I don't know how to check with us. Yeah. It's not like what iOS is in. It's like the different laptops. Yeah. Mine's pretty old too. So. Yeah. What is so just to reiterate, if you're on Windows, you might know, I shouldn't, yeah. you will get this warning. Uh, just right. click right. Allow Access. Yeah. And more likely, you're going to have this yeah. set of six icons. And we're going to go ahead and start from PowerPoint. If you happen to not bring a PowerPoint, you don't have to. You could say, blank project. But if you do have a PowerPoint file to use, go ahead and say, from PowerPoint and create. Yeah. Um, I am the trial, but okay. if I mistake, I went to the uh, um, Captivate um, Prime. Oh, yeah. What okay. is the difference? Captivate between? Prime is their learning management system. Oh, okay. So okay. just like D2L or Canvas or, oh, okay. yeah, all those, that's, um, Adobe has made a learning <laughs> management system. Okay. Thank you. I tried it out. It's, Simple, rudimentary, you know, but we have enough learning pages. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so the next 
thing that it's going to do is it's going to prompt you to load a PowerPoint file. So just navigate to a PowerPoint file and click on it and then select open. Do you expect? Trying to load a PowerPoint slide. It gets to this point and then it just stops. It won't do anything. Which PowerPoint slide? Which PowerPoint file you're trying to do? Right now, I'm trying to upload one that I know is just one slide, but it seems to still be trying to think about one I tried earlier with 39 slides. It's giving me a mixed message. Yeah, it does that. Okay, and go to the PowerPoint. So high fidelity means that it's going to kind of take a little bit more time to process the PowerPoint file to get sure uh, just find the quality images out of it. Like right, right, it just means right, that right. you'll be able to do what Josh was showing okay, where you can go back yeah, exactly. So but like, honestly, I'm not sure why you would not put it now. Quit out of like, why, why if, I, if I unclick it, does my export have lower quality? Yeah. Uh, if you unclick it, your export will have lower quality. Yeah. If you happen to have um, your slides timed in PowerPoint, you could select slide duration as well. I don't have audio with my PowerPoint slides or have them timed, so I'm not selecting slide duration. And then you can click OK. You so will find it will launch PowerPoint. <laughs> All right. Let's see you stand here. So a thing to note that uh, we discovered with Margaret over here, if by any chance you wanted to have your students do a Captivate project, they actually do not have the Adobe site license available to them within the software license. So available to staff. So if they go to the software library, they're not even going to see an Adobe site license option. I did the site license option, but then it's it only gives me a trial option, or I need to put in a serial number that I need to get somewhere. Yep, you get they serial number. You a serial they number. They do. Yeah. I'm being asked for an Adobe ID now. Yep. So go make an Adobe ID. Video You have to. Uh, Adobe is like every other company in their personal ID. They want your information. I know they do. When would they have sent me an email? Uh, uh, as soon as you right? click download, they yep. send you an email. So spam. <laughs> um, if you want, the serial number is on. I have it. The drive. Yeah. That's all right. I'm just going to do it over there. Shall I shout it out to you? No. <laughs> Did you break it? No, not especially. Yeah, it's um. Camtasia and Captivate. The big divergence split is like Camtasia is very video driven and Captivate is very slide driven. Right. But, yeah. Camtasia doesn't need to be video driven, but I see what you're saying. Yep. All right. Does everybody have a PowerPoint in their Captivate project? Yeah. All right. So now, if you have a headset, and you don't have to have one because you can do it, like we said, with a built-in mic, what you can do is click, go to a slide that you want to record audio on. You can navigate over here on the left, and then just click record. And like Josh was mentioning, you can click the preview down here to see your slide below your audio. And then you click record. Have the and it may prompt you to calibrate your audio input. And if you want, you can go through that process. I'm going to say no because you already saw me do it, even though I'm using a different mic. And then it will give me the prompt. And here I am recording some more audio. And I'm going to keep it short so that everybody else can. And then I'm going to click the stop button. And I'll now leave you a few minutes to record some audio. Since they don't have access to the program, go faster. they really cannot be very interactive. So that's, students don't have 
Um, the published material is just on the web. Students will be able to use it. They don't need a license to captivate. If you want them to edit and create objects, right, they don't have access to captivate to download and install on their own machines. But they can consume anything that you create okay. up on the web or your D2L site or your Canvas site or your Moodle site. It can, they can read, listen, watch, whatever you can publish. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> yep, exactly. They don't need the Captivate software for that. Okay. Um, I guess what I was going to just mention, I kind of, I'm sorry I got a little, uh, I was chit-chatting a little uh, too much, but the final step is publish to, is the publishing setting. Basic functionality is and generally, you say publish to your computer. This is where we had those uh, HTML5 and Swift options. And generally, I recommend HTML5 with scalable content and to zip the files. You select a location for it, click publish. That will generate a zip file, which is like your little mini website. And you take that zip file and upload it either to your website or your course. And again, I will, uh, I'm happy to follow up with you if you have any questions and you want to actually do this. Because um, I, I showed it a little quickly when I went through it the first time. But I want to be respectful of your time and we are basically at time now. So.